Hi guys, I'm Natalie Rizzo from Nutrition a la Natalie, and today I'm gonna share my three steps to become a registered dietitian if you already have a degree. I have shared my career change journey in other videos, which I will post in the notes below. But for those of you who don't know, I'm a second career dietitian. I used to work in ad sales. I went back to school to become a dietitian and I share my story and I get so many questions from readers and viewers. So I am getting more into the nitty gritty of how you go back to school to become a dietitian if you already have a degree in a different field. I have a resource that lays out everything you ever wanted to know about this, and I will talk more about that at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But until then, let's jump in with the three steps to take to become a registered dietitian if you already have a degree. Step number one is to evaluate all the options. I know when you search around the internet, there's so much information out there about how to change careers, how to become a registered dietitian. It's overwhelming. Where do you start? There are three different types of programs for people who already have a bachelor's degree in a different field. So there is a DPD program, and that is just essentially taking the courses that you need that are approved by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You're not gonna end up with another degree at the end of this. You're just taking the classes you need to fulfill the requirements to eventually get into a dietetic internship and be able to sit for your registered dietitian exam. I don't know that many people who have gone this route as second career registered dietitians, but the option is out there. The second option is to get a master's in nutrition. By 2024, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is gonna require all new registered dietitians have a master's degree. I personally went this route. I know a lot of dietitians who have gone this route. Since you already have a bachelor's degree, you can apply to a master's program without having to go and do a second bachelor's degree. But there are some hiccups there. You do have to take some prerequisites, which I'll talk about in a second. The third option is what they call a coordinated program. Now, when I went back to school, I didn't see that many of these programs in New York City, which is where I lived and where I wanted to go to school but there is more and more of these options becoming available. And what a coordinated program is, is essentially a master's program combined with a dietetic internship. The reason that this is great is because getting into the dietetic internship is difficult. It's competitive. They only accept about 50% of applicants. So if you can apply to a program and know that at the end of it, you are already into a dietetic internship, that is a really awesome degree to get. These are not available at all schools, so you have to check the school's website to see if that's available there. So that's step one, is just evaluating the programs and figuring out which one is right for you. Step two. Step two is to take the prerequisite coursework. If you have a degree in a different field that does not relate to science, for instance, my first degree was actually in history, and then I worked in advertising, neither one of which have anything to do with nutrition, so I hadn't taken really any science classes, you have to go back to undergrad and take those science prerequisites. Those are things like biology, chemistry, anatomy and physiology, organic chem, biochem, statistics, sometimes an intro to nutrition class, sometimes a food science class. There's usually about seven to 10 prerequisite courses that you have to take, and you have to start with the most basic ones. For instance, chemistry is a prereq for organic chem. Some of them require a lab, so you have to do it in person, and some don't, so you can do them online. This is all specified in my resource that I'm gonna talk about at the end, so you can find more info on this on the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics website. You can kind of just Google the program you're looking at and see what prerequisites they require. Some schools, for instance, are okay with you only taking half of the prerequisites before you apply. So this can vary from school to school, but you are absolutely 100% definitely going to need to take those prerequisites in order to go into a master's program or any sort of nutrition program. The other thing you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna get good grades in those classes, A's and B's, because the nutrition schooling is competitive. And if they see you're getting C's and D's, a lot of times you're not gonna get accepted. 
The third step is actually applying. And there's different requirements for every school. For instance, if you're applying to a master's program, some schools require that you take the GRE, some schools do not. All schools are going to require a personal statement. They're going to require letters of recommendation, um, but the number that each school requires is different. So you're going to want to look on the school's website to see how many letters of recommendation you need and what they want in that personal statement. As for the personal statement, even if you have no nutrition experience, you still want to talk about what makes you a standout individual that you're intelligent, that you're motivated, that you had this career and you worked really hard and rose through the ranks. All of those things are helpful in the admissions process. If you have any free time while you're doing your prerequisite work, if you can volunteer at all in the nutrition field, and this can be as simple as volunteering at a food bank, or we have an organization called City Harvest in New York City that distributes food to lower income areas, those kinds of things look really good on an application. So they like to see that you're really proactive and trying to get involved in the community. So that will be helpful. And then of course, you're gonna need some transcripts from your undergrad. No matter how long ago that was, if it was five, six years ago, they still wanna see those transcripts and the transcripts for the prerequisite courses that you've been working towards. And then you apply and you wait. Applications can be on a rolling basis or they may have a deadline that you need to apply by a, by a certain time to get in for the next semester. So check that out on the website of the school that you're looking at. So that's really the process to apply to become a dietitian, to go to school for nutrition. Once you're in school, there's a lot more to take into account, like the schooling process, the dietetic internship, the registered dietitian exam, what you can actually do as a registered dietitian. And I have all of that information in an ebook. The no-brainer guide to becoming a registered dietitian, how to successfully change careers. This is literally put in there everything that I know, everything that I went through into this 20 page ebook so that you have all the information step by step. So I'm gonna drop the link for that in the notes below and I'll share the table of contents so you can see what's in there. It's really a resource to be helpful for you. So I hope you use it and become a registered dietitian. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more like it, and I'll see you next time.